there everyone. Today we're talking about mortgages. What kind of mortgage you should have, whether or not you even should have a mortgage, and how to pay yours off faster. I cannot wait to talk about this with you all. It's Jen here. How are you guys doing? It is coronavirus crazy right now around Canada and like many of you, I am stuck at home with my children. So what better thing to do with my time than make a few more videos? And today is a really important topic, I think especially for what our whole society and world is going through right now and that is paying off debt. If you're new here and you've never seen one of my videos, welcome. I'm so glad you're here participating. Drop me a comment below letting me know who you are and don't forget to subscribe. So my husband Andrew actually gave me the idea for this video and what is going to become a series of videos on paying off debt and managing your personal finances. He was like, Jen, you need to be telling people what we have done over the years because there's a lot of people really struggling in this area of their lives. So I wanted to give away what our tips and tricks are in this video. And this video has a Canadian focus because there are a lot of videos, books, etc., out there that are very American focused when it comes to paying off debt. I don't know about you, but when I'm seeing like Susie Orman on Oprah or with her book out, I'm like, what are you talking about Susie? What in the world is a 401k? <laughs> Canada is very different than America, even when it comes to mortgage. Okay, first of all, I want to speak to those of you who are watching who don't yet own their own home and are wanting some advice on it. If you do own your own home, stick around because the whole rest of the video is going to be for you. But um, I wanted to first talk about when you should get into the home ownership game. And my advice, and I am not a financial advisor, I need to say that right away, please don't take my advice as gospel. I'm not a financial advisor. This is like mom advice, okay? My advice, and this is how my husband and I have done it, but my advice for you is, the younger you can get into the home ownership game, the better. If you are someone who is responsible with your money, that is. Because obviously you don't wanna get into it if you can't handle finances because you'll lose your home. The reason why you want to get into home ownership younger is because you can pay it off faster. And that means you are younger when you reach financial freedom and have no debt and are able to do all that wonderful traveling and things you've always dreamed of doing. So the sooner you get into it, the sooner you stop paying somebody else rent, the better. In Andrew and my case, we actually purchased our first home when we were only 22. <laughs> To answer your question, yes, we were babies when we got married, okay? We were very young when we got married. The reason we were able to get into home ownership so young was because we had been responsible during our teens and our early 20s and our college and university years with our money. I graduated university with zero debt. I worked really hard to do that. And that's gonna be a whole nother video all about um, saving for college and university and how to get your kids saving for it from a young age. That's another video for you. But the only way we were able to get a mortgage early was because we had such good credit because we literally had no debt. And we worked really, really hard for getting that down payment on our first home as well. Now the big thing right now in the news is Oh, these poor young people, these poor like millennials, or I don't even think it's millennials anymore. What would it be people in their 20s right now? I don't know, Gen X, Y, Z. Anyway, oh, they're never gonna be able to afford home ownership because housing prices have skyrocketed, etc., etc., etc. They can't come up with a down payment. So their parents are gonna have to give them their down payment. And I'm sorry, but I don't really take seriously the complaint of people that are in their 20s and 30s right now saying that, oh, it's so hard, I can't come up with a down payment because they're usually saying it while holding the latest iPhone and a Starbucks, okay? Like the reason my husband and I were able to come up with that 15, 20% down payment when we were young is because we got rid of a cell phone, so we were we had one cell phone between the two of us and a, I think a $10 plan. We didn't have cable, we didn't have Netflix, we did not go out to eat. We didn't get coffees from Tim's, we didn't do any of that until we had our down payment. So that was 15 years ago 
And I think the same is true today. If you are really serious about owning your own home and getting a mortgage, you are going to have to learn to be cutting back on your other expenses. I'm here for a message for those of you who are actually serious about it and I'm saying you can make that down payment. You're just gonna need to cut back on a lot of things in order to do it, but it's not impossible to do. Okay, so whatever age you are, you've decided to get into the game of getting a mortgage and you've come up with a down payment. You go to the bank and they pre-approve you for a mortgage, okay? So lots of you who are watching have gone through this. You go to the bank, you give them your income statements, your saving statements, and they pre-approve you for a certain amount. The biggest mistake that people make is taking out a mortgage for that full amount that they're pre-approved for. So they say, okay, the bank pre-approved me for $400,000 mortgage or a $250,000 mortgage. And then they go and shop for a home that is $250,000 right on or $400,000 right on. The amount the bank approves you for in a mortgage is the absolute max. And if you actually take out a mortgage that is that size, you're gonna find yourself in a world of trouble if you lose your job and are off work for a few weeks. If we have a crisis in the world and you're laid off, if suddenly other prices on things like utilities and gas skyrocket and you can't afford your daily living expenses. So my advice to you would be to only take out a mortgage that's maybe two thirds to three quarters the amount that the bank approved you for. So the bank approves you for a $250,000 mortgage, you're going shopping for a house that's $200,000. So my husband and I practiced this. Um, we've had three different homes we've owned, so three different mortgages. Our first home, I think they approved us for $189,000 and we got a house for $150,000. So you can, yes, house prices have gone up since then. Our second house, they approved us, I believe they approved us for 350,000 and we built a house that time and we built it for about 100,000 less than that because we did a lot of the work ourselves. This next house, I'm not going to tell you what the bank approved our mortgage for, but I will tell you that the mortgage we took out was 40% of what they approved us for. So they gave us an approval amount and we were like, uh-uh, we're not going with a mortgage that big. We don't need a mortgage that big. We don't want that in our lives. So we were able to build our next home for about 40% of what the bank approved us for. And I really think that this is key to financial security and to getting your mortgage paid off faster by not maxing yourself out. I mean, it's really easy to get into this optimistic, heady space when the bank approves you for this huge amount because you think, wow, the bank must think I can afford this and I must, you know, I'm in a good situation. No, the bank just wants your money. They want you to be paying off your mortgage forever. So don't go with that max amount. Now here's the part that most people don't wanna face. A lot of times, the amount of mortgage that you can afford, which again, needs to be two thirds to three quarters of what the bank approves you for, Right now, you may not be able to find a home for that amount in the area you live. So what do you do? Do you just continue to rent forever? Well, my advice is to look outside of where you live. Put in for a job transfer. If you work from home, it doesn't really matter that you stay in that one area. But if you are working somewhere where you cannot afford to own a home, there's a huge imbalance there and I really think you need to relook at what you are doing career-wise if you're not making nearly enough to live where you work or you need to consider commuting. So an example of this, when we, our second home that we built, when we were looking to buy property to build on, we wanted a larger property and we couldn't really afford a property in the town we currently lived in. So we looked 10 minutes outside of the town we lived in. So 10 minutes down the road. And I kid you not, the same size of lot was half the price of where we were living, 10 minutes. So my husband added 10 minutes to his daily commute and we were able to afford to build a home on our dream property that was much larger. It's really something that perhaps you need to get creative with in your own life. So when you're searching for that home, Consider these things. Whatever it is you need to do, if you're serious about home ownership, you're gonna have to get creative about it. The other thing I hear a lot of people saying for their first home is that they don't wanna do any work. So they want their first home, they wanna be able to afford to buy a home, and yet 
they don't want to put any work into it. Okay, guys, reality check. Your first home is going to be a fixer upper, most likely, unless you are kind of like a trust fund baby who has a ton of money. It's a rite of passage. Your first home is probably going to be small. There's gonna be work that needs to be done on it, and you're gonna to have to roll up your sleeves. I don't care who you are, everyone can learn to paint. Everyone can learn to dismantle, to drywall, to do a bit of trimming, basic construction jobs, laying flooring. These are things, I mean, we're on YouTube. You can find a YouTube video on how to do anything. And it's part of the adventure. It's part of the experience of owning your first home is doing some work yourself. If you are willing to buy a home that's more of a fixer upper, it could be half the price of a similar sized home in the neighborhood that's been all upgraded. There may come a time in your life where you're on to your second or third or fourth home and you don't wanna do any of the work because you're so busy with your career and children, that's fine. But your first home, just get used to the idea that it's likely gonna be a fixer upper. It's probably going to be small. It might be a semi-detached. You're going to have to adjust your expectations of what you want to be able to afford this. And it will be worth it in the end for the long-term gain, for the equity that you're going to be able to gain from that to put towards the next home. Okay, enough about first time home buyers, first time mortgages. I think you get the idea of what my husband and I practiced and how well it paid off for us. Next, I wanted to talk about your actual mortgage payments. If you have a mortgage and you are currently doing monthly payments, you need to stop doing that right now and get on a bi-weekly or a weekly plan. If your financial advisor or your banker has not described to you why this is a good idea, um, I don't know, I feel like they're required to explain that to you, but maybe they're not. The bank is gonna pocket a whole lot more money from you and a whole lot more interest if you're only paying your mortgage payments once a month. My husband and I pay once a week. We have a mortgage payment that comes off every single week. By doing this, so if you pay weekly or bi-weekly, so for example, if you have a 30-year mortgage, you will pay off that mortgage eight years sooner and you will save up to 30% interest payments on that mortgage. So you will have that mortgage paid off in 22 years and you're paying the bank way less interest and spending way less money yourself. So if you have a 25 year mortgage, you're gonna be bumping that down to 20 years right off the bat just by switching to weekly or bi-weekly payments. So if you haven't done this yet, definitely do it. The next thing you want to do is read the fine print and find out exactly how your mortgage works. Most mortgages in Canada right now allow you to make payment matches or prepayments on your mortgage where whenever you make a mortgage payment, you can make an extra one. It's not like it used to be in the 80s where you could only make extra mortgage payments one day of the year. So again, when my husband and I, for our first home, for example, we made a lot of prepayments on it as we had extra money coming in, which meant that when we went to, to our second home, our mortgage was, like I mentioned already, was very much less than what a typical home like that would cost because um, we had so much equity built up in our first mortgage. And you wanna make those prepayments when you can. Right now, you may be in a state in your life, maybe you've been laid off because of what's happened with coronavirus, whatever, you may not be able to make those prepayments and that's fine. The idea is that your mortgage is flexible and allows you to do that. Next, I wanted to talk about home equity line of credits. Okay, my husband and I, full disclosure, we have used a home equity line of credit and that was used when we were building our second home to bridge the gap for financing. So we've totally used one before, but it was all wrapped up in how we were financing our construction and then we were paying it off right away. Now, most bankers would say, oh, the line of credits are amazing, home equity line of credits, because it's a low interest loan, so you can use it to buy your vehicle instead of paying a vehicle loan to the company you bought your vehicle from. It can be a cheaper loan for schooling. You can use that home equity line of credit for home rentals. Okay, stop. Always remember, your banker is trying to get more money out of you. I don't care if they're the nicest person in the world, their job depends on it and that's fine. Who can blame them? They're like a salesperson trying to sell you a new car. 
they're, they're paid to sell you these products and it's their job to see you fully utilize home equity lines of credit. But it's gonna take you quite a long time to pay off your mortgage if you're constantly upping your mortgage back up again because you keep taking out home equity lines of credit. For my husband and I, what we have found to be a much better idea is if we need a new vehicle, we save up for that new vehicle and we pay for that new vehicle in cash. We don't take out a loan from the car company, but we also don't take out a home equity line of credit. If we need new furniture, if we need to fix up our home, we need to do renovations. Again, we save up and we pay for that in cash. We do not take that out of a home equity line of credit. If we want to go on a vacation, same thing. We are not using a line of credit to do that. Otherwise, you would never have your mortgage paid off. So if you're in the situation right now where you do have a home equity line of credit that you use to buy a new pickup truck or whatever it was, I highly suggest trying to pay that off as fast as you can and close it out so that you're not tempted to use it anymore. And then any extra money you have goes into a savings account for what you need or your checking account. And then on top of that, you're paying off your mortgage, paying it off faster and faster. We treat it like a game at our house. You know, you check your bank account and you look, okay, how many years do we have left? How many payments do we have left? It's like this constant challenge to challenge ourselves to pay off more and more and more. Now, why are we doing this? Why are we wanting to even pay off our mortgage so fast? Well, because I have goals for my life and my future that involve traveling, <laughs> that involve doing fun things with my family, and I can't do that if I'm continually having mortgage payments. And the faster you get it paid off, the faster you have the freedom to use your money how you want to use it. And then when your home is paid off, you know, you've got this incredible asset sitting there that um, when you're in retirement and you go to sell and downsize, you've got money to live off for years and years to come. Okay, so if you're still here, I hope that you were not bored by my mortgage talk and my little bits of advice from a Canadian stay-at-home mom on paying off debt. This video is going to be one in a series. As I already mentioned, one is going to be about student loans, about getting a post-secondary education without going into debt. One of the videos is going to be about vehicles and car purchases in debt. Another one is going to be all about credit card usage. I also want to get into talking about luxury purchases and extras and how to keep a handle on that. And I even want to get into how to have a debt-free vacation. So there are so many topics on this and I'm hoping to put one Canadian debt busters video out per week for the next while. And I'm hoping it'll just get our minds off of what's going on in this world and help us learn how to take control in the midst of so much in uncertainty so that when we are hit with a crisis again, I'm hoping that I'm not gonna be having viewers that are living paycheck to paycheck that are super worried about their finances if they have to go on unemployment insurance. I'm hoping that what I can bring to you and help you with is really gonna be valuable to you. So if you got something out of this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and keep your eye open for my next Debt Busters video. For the least, this is Jen.